Hi guys, welcome back to another video. Peter Kennedy, Kennedy's Garage, Port Law. What do we have today? We have a 2020, 2020 um, Opel Vivero, Renault Traffic. Um, what else, El Zilda and Nissan Primus there? And what do we have? We have this car coming from another, well, coming from a customer that has been at another garage. And he has said intermittently over the last couple of months, I think, I was gonna say years, but months since he's bought the car, he has an intermittent misfire, stutter, not doing his job, that coming on intermittently and that, check engine light. Now I have created faults here. I've been in here looking and I have created faults. So you have to ignore those. Mass airflow and intake air temperature sensor. The one I've been looking at is that P0203, cylinder three, injector control circuit open, okay. So what are the variables here? I actually run a fast video up on Tiki Toki. And what I was doing on the Tiki Toki was asking that, lads, what would they do next? So I showed the fault code and then I said, where would you go next? So would you, because someone else has been in here, would you just erase faults? It's not going to go away. It's going to come back. Would you remove injectors? Send them off to be tested. Most likely going to fail. I don't know if any of you find that, but I find if I send off injectors to anyone to get check, checked or tested, they come back being bad. I could even fit in a set of injectors not knowing or not seeing firsthand what's wrong with the injectors. And then once I fit them, I still have a problem. Had a problem with a Hilux recently where I hit this and here you have 2,000 euros of injectors in a car. Um, so I'm not going to get them tested. What would you do next? What I've done is I've done an insulation test. The insulation test has passed. On number three, sorry, on number three injector. Didn't do a cross reference on, I was looking for sending in voltage in through one pin and the body. I was going on to the actual fuel feed pipe. So the body was going to be connected to the fuel feed pipe and I was insulating testing from one terminal to the body and another terminal to the body and had OL and carrying 250 volts of sending at 255 or 256 or something like that on the injector. So I'm happy that the injector is good. I did say to the man that I could move that to number four, three, just don't do number two. Because you know the way the French count backwards and they sometimes count from maybe, you know, the, the flywheel side back that way rather than time and chain side over that way. So don't ever do that because you don't know where you've gone. Always kind of do that, if that makes sense, one and four, or even if it was two and one, you'll still get the gist of it, you'll figure it out from moving them. But two injectors, we swap around, would that give them a, an answer? Um, I don't know if I've seen something here or not, but what I have seen, and I'm just looking, is there's my insulation tester, is there, looking in here, and I see nothing wrong. I started the car with the airflow meter disconnected because I had that air intake pipe taken off. And the reason I was doing that was to see if I'd done a wiggle test. My engine ECU is living over there. The harness just goes down around the bottom and rolls over around that area, back up. And so I was pulling at, I don't want to force the water pipe there, but I was wiggling at my loom all the way over, all the way around off camera. And then I was over here and I had a little look and what I looked and I saw, saw kind of draw, drew me in, and I know that maybe my voice might be great over the engine running, but drew me in when I looked. I just went in by the injectors, and then I saw that two wires separated, where they're together in there, they're together in there, and they're together in there. And then if I look at it, the harness, that's loom tape, so it makes it look pretty OE. And that loom tape, the wiring hairs comes over around the back and then I see white wires in here and one of those none of those are just white so are we encountering something in here I'm going to go ripping this apart to try and see did someone do something with the wiring or he said when he brought it back to the dealer he bought it from they cleaned up the connections on the injector to see what had happened am I nosy Am I going in here to see? If I don't find anything and I maybe do a load test on the wiring, maybe I'll go along and swap an injector at that stage, but for now I'm gonna try and find something. Well, I'm wanting to do a wiring integrity test from the engine ECU to the actual injectors. 
it's kind of cracker jack we don't have anything on which is a given on auto data so you can say okay right they have nothing that's grand so then we're back into all data but if we go into all data we have nothing on the 1.6 diesel so I've, I've been over here and i thought there was actually something wrong with my search engine so i went looking for a mazda that i'd be on and like when i just maybe i should be looking at you know a, a different wagon or try a different wagon but i've no information on this thing at all other than labor times and i said to myself is there something going on here but the long and short of it is well, i don't know what the heck is going on so if i went back to to mazda again in auto data we get a full populated page but i can't get any information on it so whether it's i'd say the next port to call there's two liter diesel the next port to call then will in theory i'm just going to try the two liter diesel and just see maybe that might do if i saw on a cross reference so that is the two liter vivero would the wiring to the engine ecu be anything similar i'll have a route around and just see but it's i have nothing available for 1.6 back out of the car made the decision to pull off whatever block connectors i could off of the engine ecu so there's three of them in there three of them pulled off on one of them so i'm looking for big pins in here if you can see that we've eight nice big pins along there so in theory that could be carrying you know heavy load or whatever the heck you want to call it for our injectors um so i'm going to load test or at least put some kind of load on that wiring harness between point a and point b h7 bulb or something which will carry a good bit of um amperage through it now i'm i don't think even though it is in there this doctrine that was done with the wires i'd say someone was after this before me and they have changed the block connector thinking that it might make it go away now they have soldered and i don't know if i showed that before or not but i have i have pointed out that the wiring um was kind of tatty or worked upon um but yeah what i'm going to do is i'm going to do a load test between point a point b of some sort and then with the actual light bulb lighting i'm going to do a big huge horsing pulling wiggle test on this thing and just see if i can create any dropout or you know a flash of the light bulb or something along those lines but i'm probably thinking that it's an injector and i have encountered before where we've put in injectors from guidance from injector test guys and even though they might be testing bad and not good enough to pass these lads tests in theory i've bought new injectors and fit them in a car and then had the problem still happening there's a one in mind where it's a it's an actual toyota hilux and i had a fuel pressure but i have a video done it so you will see that or it's somewhere around in my um i don't know catalog of videos but right now i'm not going to go and change an injector so we're going to load test these and if needs be i'm probably going to move if i'm happy with my wiring number three to number one number one to number three and in theory the problem should migrate with it even if it does take me a day or two to drive and recreate this problem but that's i'm thinking what i'm going to do too much of a shot in the dark to throw you know this thing out as i said insulation test doesn't give me anything have to do a wear and integrity test and I'm, I'm going to move then to see what it does from there okay okay i have my wiring identified what i do find is a little bit normal oh, sorry abnormal is that my pins are far apart now again i don't have wearing diagrams maybe i should try and show you this so i'm actually looking i'm going to come up here so we have ol there it would be nice if i could get all this in the one shot but it's a little bit kind of uh, grumpy and or awkward so in there into that pin if you can see that only barely hanging there top right hand corner 0.6 of an ohm of a resistance okay i'm going to take that back out of that now i'm going to go over here with one hand if i can and i'm going to swap into the other pin again as i said very very small pins so there is no problem ol again 
and I'm gonna let you look in here once again. And the pin, I believe, I'm after is then down here. Yes, so I don't know if you can see that. So the other pin was up here, and now I'm down. If you can see that, I know it's awkward here. Which again gives me that point six of an ohm of resistance. But <clears throat> is it strange that they're so far away? Maybe I should double check on some of the other ones just to be sure that they're all kind of all over the place. It would be nice to see, or maybe to have a look. Maybe Haynes Pro, if I get it on, I have it. I think on my. Uh, yeah, maybe I should look at component information on the Snap-on. Maybe, but I have the pins identified. I think I'm going to just send energy, power, whatever you want to call it, into the both of those run a bulb and just do a wiggle test to make sure there's no, you know, drop out in that circuit. Okay, sitting out here then, I just have little back probing pins stuck in there and two little jumper cables. Again, quite simple, quite easy. Right, so those two wires are in theory being load tested at this point in time and if i'm pulling and wiggling and i did do some of this off camera i can get no interference or change in that actual harness or loom or bulb or whatever i don't want to go too mad because i have pins hanging out of you know my block connectors but i cannot create any break or distinction or change of format in my loom or harness. So I'm, go I'm, I'm going to do more of it off camera, but that's as much as I can do on camera now. Probably need my second hand to do, but I don't believe we've got anything wrong with the wiring harness. Also, I have done a little pin fitment test, I suppose, where you'll just check, you know, for drag, if that makes sense. So all I'm doing is just checking for drag inside in that you can see where they are nice and tight enough to hold i've also done the same over here only with the pins but i have done the same over there so look in theory i don't believe we've anything wrong with the wiring it's going to be an injector it's the most common denominator either wiring or injector and i just right now i think i'm going to do a a switch through and an injector one more thing i want to prove to myself lads i have the car up and running and we have our injector number three control circuit. We have the mass airflow and the intake air temperature that I created. But what I want to do, I didn't delete them. What I want to do is to prove to myself that we, I wouldn't say that we're on number three circuit, but I want to prove what side this car is counting from. I was looking for a toothpick, but I don't see one. There we go, I knew I had one. Okay. We've just, in theory, had a fault in number one and a wire got broken. Some lads would say, don't do that because they could stay stuck open or they could overfuel and all that crap. I'm an old fashioned guy. I do it and it, it doesn't or hasn't got me in bother as of yet. But am I going to get a cylinder number one? Am I going to get a cylinder number one uh fault okay we see the headlight gone off it is so we have at this point four faults where are we gone we have four faults in engine we had only three so we hopefully are seeing that there's another another injector circuit open and is it number one yes okay all i want to prove to myself is that we are counting from the timing chain side and that we have one two three four rather than one two three four sometimes i find french cars are a bit mental and they do stuff backwards they count from that side back so i just because of no information on, on all the data and stuff i just want to prove to myself okay okay we're going to swap an injector i put three marks on number three and just one yellow mark on number one i'm going to do it Get this thing out in the road and see there could be something wrong inside the driver and an ecu but i have to try at this point in time prove to myself that it's going to be an injector or not happy that the wire is intact happy 
if we remove or swap around the injectors, it's going to bring you somewhere. Anyway, get these things swapped, squeeze it up, put it together, get it on the road. Just back from system scan. Just back from a drive. Um, not getting a huge amount of kicks, mixed fires. I was actually saying to my chase now after an intermittent problem, and I was going to ask. I was going to actually cut the. I was going to call the end of the video and see what you would do in this case with an intermittent, you know, problem issue. Blah blah blah. I know. Uh, Bob from BMS says quite openly that he doesn't do intermittents. It's either right or it's wrong. If it's wrong, he'll fix it. If it's not, he won't. Um, all I'm, I've felt is when I'm driving, I've just got one or two little, just this morning at about two miles from here, and it didn't do it constantly. It wasn't a, you know, it was a, just a, I get this thing and, and I got it about twice or so. Um, I think we'll just get into engine management. Again, I'm going to suggest ads. Yeah, I'm going to go. Start to ask me all these. Okay. Start to ask me all these stupid questions. Sure, and I don't know what the heck maybe i should do but i could be on 10 cars at one time here i know people say 10 now you know but I, I could be on a lot of cars of a camshaft in there up on the lift to be done um and then i'm going to be driving i have to meet a chap at 1 30 so i'm going to be driving this again maybe to see but right now we have no we have no um faults in there bloody cars hopefully if i drive it at 1 30 hopefully it'll kick its kick its heels again and we'll see something see did it go from you know, number three to number one. Maybe I'm doing it the wrong way. Number three to number one. Did the the problem actually move? As you're aware, block connector changed. I know lads have said that the block connectors give trouble on them, but and that's where we're at right now. Okay, guys. Unfortunately, I have not been able to cre recreate this problem. I've, as I said, driven and felt one or two little small little things, but not enough for me to get. My problems to move from number one to number three or three to one or whatever it may be. So on this occasion, unfortunately, I wouldn't say I'm calling it a fix. I'm not. The customer is going to take it back. It's a Tuesday today. I've just been talking to him or conversing with him. He needs the car on Thursday. So he's going to come. He's going to pick it up on Thursday. And he has a bit of driving to do over the weekend. And then we're crossing our fingers and are hoping that it's potentially going to kick its heels enough to point us in a direction. My guts are saying injector. The windings inside in the piezo um, injector creating the problem. It's my guts. But I don't want to tell the man to replace an injector one, maybe, um, to keep the thing cost effective for the owner or the customer. I'm going to allow him, not allow, I'm going to give the car back to him. He's going to drive. We have conversed about this, we know. He's going to drive it for a couple of days, week, maybe two if needs be, and then bring it back. Once we get some kind of warning lamps and see does that problem move from number one to number three. That's as fair as I'm going to go right now. I'm probably going to call it a fix. Not going to call it a fix. Going to call it a finish or a video. And I'd probably put up a part two maybe of pulling out the injector, etc. And I don't think I showed that. I showed it kind of a voila where it's just been swapped around. So I'm going to leave it out. I'm going to say goodbye. I'm going to see you all next cartoon. And we're going to hopefully get more evidence to call an injector rather than just saying oh let's throw an injector on it I could have I suppose sent it in to get it tested again as I said there earlier in the video they just they condemn them all of them so if they're condemning every injector I leave in it's and as a variable there I could get no test in house and all that crack look I could do a lot of things but I'm not going to do that for now anyway. but look lads I'll see you all next cartoon Peter Kennedy sign out for this one um, Misfire is she a P three O no it isn't a three O three. Um some kind of a P three hundred fault for the cylinder three misfire. Do we have a wrote down here? No. As do not. Neither here there. I'll talk to you all next cartoon. See you later boys. Peter Kennedy, signing out. See you next cartoon, lads.